For this video, I'm going to give you a realistic example of what you would have been doing in the classroom if you had been here doing this lab. I just returned from the Crete. I have my sample from the Riffle. I have my sample from the pool. Okay. Below the riffle sample here, you can see that I have a tray. This is a plastic tray that's white background so that we can easily see everything in that tray. I have a spoon and a sucker to help me get organisms out. I'm then going to pick through the organisms in the tray, place them inside these um, culture dishes, and use those underneath the dissecting scope to identify. If you look at this tray, you can see that we've divided it up into grids. We have three, six, nine, twelve different grids on here. The grids are used if you have a lot of organisms in your sample, you can count all of the organisms within a single grid and then maybe randomize three or four grids out of the overall twelve, multiply it back to get the overall organisms of a particular type that's in your sample. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the riffle sample. I'm going to take the riffle sample unscrew the top here and pour the riffle sample into the container. And there's a lot of organisms that we have down here. We'll move this quickly up here so you can see what we have. And there is a big guy right there. That's a cool one. Let's see what else do we have in here. A lot of little guys moving around everywhere in there. So you can see that this riffle sample is loaded with various organisms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these culture dishes and for every organism that I see in here, if I can identify the type, I'm going to capture that organism, place it in a culture dish so that then I can use the dichotomous key to go in and identify these organisms. I'm going to try to pick through almost every organism in the pan. As I pick through every organism, then um, I will move those over to the dissecting scope, identify them with the dichotomous key. I'm finished picking through the riffle. So here's the riffle. I picked through about one third of the riffle. And you can see here that I have the organisms divided up into three, six, nine, twelve different jars. So those all have different um, organisms that are going to be on the key. I'm now going to take each of these jars put them over here underneath the dissecting scope. The dissecting scope then is going to be attached to the computer. We're going to get an image and you're going to work through the key, dichotomous key, and identify all of the organisms in each of those culture dishes. Here is the first organism. I want you to turn to page 182 in your manual and work through the dichotomous key to figure out the identity of this organism. In order to do, use the dichotomous key, you look at the organism, you read 1A and 1B and see which one applies. So it has more than three pairs of jointed legs or has zero to three pairs of jointed legs. This one has zero jointed legs, so zero to three, we go over, it says it's an insect. This is an insect larva. Looks like a worm, larvae look like worms, um, nymphs have legs and look more like the adults. This larva then is going to go through complete metamorphosis and change into an insect that we all know. We look at um, the right then, 1B goes to number 2, we go down to 2 and we read 2A and 2B. Does not have fully developed wings or a hard covering over the wings, we would go to 3, and that is the case. So we go down to 3, body not worm-like, body worm-like. We go down to 6 has three pairs of jointed legs, has no jointed legs, may have anterior prolegs, may be large and look like a caterpillar. This one has anterior prolegs, and so it is a dipteran larvae. So we then figure out how many are in the overall sample. And so we can peruse around here, and we can see that we have, whoops, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve of them in this sample. This represents one third of the total sample, so you'd multiply the twelve by um, three to get the total sample. Here's sample two in the riffle. Um, for this one here, I'm not going to work through the dichotomous key. You will have to work through the dichotomous key to do everything on these guys. 
Here's a pretty good um, view of this guy. He has three pairs of jointed legs, no wings, no wing pads for these guys. You know, that body is very soft and squishy, a lot like a worm in there. Okay, and so he should be pretty easy to identify. Um, those are anal pro legs at the very, very end. Okay, and those are abdominal gills along the sides. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these guys in this sample. Okay, dish number three has a lot of these guys. Um, we can see these guys pretty well. This guy, if you look, he has jointed legs, so three pairs of jointed legs. Okay. He does not have fully developed wings. Right. In this case, the body is not worm-like, so it is... Um, not worm-like. We can look down here. Those are the terminal filaments. You can see how many terminal filaments he has. And that should be good to work through the key. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12 of these guys in this particular vial. We can see them really well here. Okay, this guy actually has abdominal gills. You can see these are different species, see how they look different. This is an order of insects, and we have different species inside this order. We are classifying them down to order, not down to species. You can see that big guy there with all those gills wiggling back and forth. Okay. Oh, there we go. Nice. Here's number four. These are the big giant guys we saw at the beginning. All right, we can see this guy close up. I can't get any farther back on him. See, he has three pairs of jointed legs. Definitely the body is hard. This is a nymph, not a larva. And we can see the terminal filaments there. So you can count the number of terminal filaments on that guy. Okay. So he's pretty easy. Let's see, and if you want to see the terminal claws, you can see the terminal claws on that guy as well, right at the tip of the foot. So these guys are easy. We have one, two, three of these guys in here. Okay, this guy is not on the dichotomous key. You need to know it as a phylum, so a review from animal diversity for these guys. Okay, you can see them. They're definitely worm-like. So this is a phylum that you guys did in animal diversity, so you'll have to look at the phyla. Look at this guy and figure out what phylum this guy is in. Okay, and we have one, two, three of these guys in this culture. They have a nice little arrowhead. They have a nice little eyes, and hopefully you can remember what these guys are. Let's find the other one. There's two more over here. Okay, and these guys are looking really good. Nice small guys moving across the bottom. You can see those two little eye spots little arrow shaped head looks good and next one this one is also big to be seen this is a phylum so it's not on your dichotomous key it's a phylum that you should know okay very easy to recognize especially because of all of those segments so it's a nice round guy it looks like a worm you only have three worm phyla and this one has segmentation clear and obvious segmentation Okay, here's another one of these guys. He's in the same phylum as the last one we just looked at. All right, this is a different species within that phylum. But definitely you can see those segments 
segmentation on it, and it's a worm-like body. We have a couple things in here that we're going to get. This one, next one I'm getting is kind of hard because it doesn't like the light. And he moves really fast. In fact, really, really fast. There he goes. This guy, if you look, has a little shrimp-like body. And on the key, he has way more than um, three jointed legs and appendages. Can't quite get him in focus. But there you go. So this one's easy to key out. We call this one a scud. And this guy is easy to key out on your dichotomous key. Okay, here's the next one. Still in the riffle. Whoops. Let me find it. So these guys are hard to track. But here you go. Three pairs of jointed legs. This one actually has a hard covering over its wings. It has wings and it has a hard covering over his wings. Okay, that hard covering then is representative of this entire order within the class. And this is actually an adult model. Okay, these guys are pretty cool because they, if you look very closely, you can see three pairs of jointed legs on this guy. But if you look back, you can see he's actually in a house that he built. So this guy built his own house. Very, very, very fine house that these guys build. And they build their little houses out of um, sand grains. Okay, so you can see those little grains speckling there. So really fine sand grains, they build their shells out of it. So three pairs of jointed legs. Inside that case is um, a worm-like body. And at the base of that worm-like body, they do have anal pro legs. But really nice guys here. You can see how they live in those little cases and wiggle around. We did see this order earlier. The ones that we saw earlier did not have the case. Okay, in fact, there's one without a case right there. Um, that's because it was a different species, but they build their cases on the bottom of rocks and are not mobile like these guys. And so when we used our scrub brush, we scrubbed them out of their cases, and then all we saw was um, their bodies outside the cases. Okay, now we're ready to work on the pool. This is our pool sample. You can see that there's a lot fewer things swimming around in it than in our riffle. Over here is our riffle. This is already picked through. Things are not moving around nearly as much as they were. You can see a slight difference in that this is a little bit lighter brown, a little bit more goldenish brown color. This is a lot darker black, so a lot more decay going on, and you can really smell the extra decay in the pool as compared to the riffle. Now I picked through the pool, and um, there weren't nearly the same number of things in it. So here's all our pool. For our riffle, earlier I actually made a mistake. It was about one-third, so we multiply everything by three. Over here for our pool, I picked through the whole pool, so these are going to be straight numbers when you do your counts. This is the first um, organism from the pool. This one is not an insect, so it is a phylum. The, um, it looks like a worm, so it's one of the worm phyla. If you recall, we had three worm phyla, Platyhelminthes, Annelida, and Nematoda. This one has segmentation, although you can't see it. Another way to tell this one is that it's round. And it folds back and forth, so it does have circular muscle. So, pretty easy to identify. Okay, here's the next organism. See this guy wiggling around here. Um, this is an insect larva. It has anterior prolegs. Key thing on this one, um, you know, you did see this order in the riffle, but you did not see this species in the riffle. This one's adapted specifically for the super low oxygen environments in the um, pool 
and the red that you see is very similar to hemoglobin adapted for um, that super low oxygen levels. And there are about four of these in the sample. Okay, here's the next organism. You just have to recognize the phylum of this organism. <laughs> this organism is pretty big. You can see it has nice eyes. It has a um, skeleton on the inside. In fact, it has a bony skeleton. Um, and it is a vertebrate. And it's actually a fish. And so then you just have to identify the phylum of the fish and we'll get that one done. Down at the base of the fish, then we can see another one right here. You can key that one out. Okay, this is a different species, the same order as the red one that we just saw. Right? And so it has the anterior pro legs. So there's another one of those guys, and there's two of those guys in there, only one fish. Okay, next organism in the pool, we saw this one in the um, riffle as well. We have about seven of these in the pool. Okay, and these are on your dichotomous key. You can answer them right off the bat. They have a lot of paired jointed legs, paired jointed appendages. Okay, here's the next one. It's a big one, very interesting one. Okay, a little bit too big for my dissecting scope. You can see it's segmentation. So it is segmented, it's a little bit flat. It's actually quite large. Moves around fast. And we'll try it to get up to the head and you can see that little um, sucker up at the head. So anterior sucker on it. It is flat and it is segmented. You have to know this to phylum. And it is a leech. So a nice big old leech that we found down there in the pool. Okay. Uh, this one is tough to see. It's a really small worm-like guy. Um, and he moves with only longitudinal muscles. So it's kind of very rigid when he moves. And if we can see him well enough to get it, we'd be able to get it. But this is another worm. It's a worm with only longitudinal muscle, no circular muscle. So this is actually a nematode in here. So very, very small nematode, hard to see. So I'll just identify it for you to find them. Okay, another one of these guys. Identify this one to phylum. You already had it in the riffle. There are four of these guys in this sample. Okay, this one's a little bit different. It's um, not on your dichotomous key. It is an insect, but in this case it is a pupae of, or a pupa of um, a dipteran so you can see the wing developing there, so this one's basically going to hatch out into a fly. All right, another one that's not on the key. This is a phylum. You should be getting pretty good with this phylum now. Worm phylum with circular and longitudinal muscle and is segmented. Here we have an interesting one, this guy was found in the pool. It's the next one in the pool. You can see how it has segmentation. So it's a flat, long guy with segmentation. It is a leech. Next to it here, this is an insect larva. It is on your dichotomous key. So you can work through your key and key this one out. It has no legs or appendages and it does look big and worm-like. So it should be keyed out pretty easily. Both of these then from the pool, the leech, and this guy, and I'll give you a hint, this is a crane fly larva.